Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This semester is all ladies, so uh, good morning, ladies. Uh, today we start the discussion of individual styles. As you remember, there are going to be five styles in the fashion of the long 19th century. So the neoclassical fashion, the romantic fashion, the Victorian fashion, <coughs> including the crinoline, then the late Victorian fashion uh, with the bustle, and then the Belle Epoque. So before we start really talking about the first of them, the neoclassical fashion, I would like to um, uh, to go with you briefly through a kind of chronological outline of uh, what happens uh, in the uh, long 19th century politics in uh, in Britain and in France, uh, because France has been always uh, perceived as such a fashionable place. <coughs> so, <coughs> look here. Here we have the five, uh, the five uh, styles. So the neoclassical, then the romantic, then the Victorian with the crinoline, which is invented in the later 1850s. Then the bustle, so the late Victorian style, and the Belle Epoque um, moving over from the Victorian to the Edwardian period. So let us now look at uh, uh, the time frame. Uh, you have um, the British monarchs above the, the line and the French uh, governments and, and uh, monarchs um, below the line. So uh, when the French Revolution starts, uh, it is still in the reign of King George III, the unfortunate monarch who, um, uh, whose health was failing. So from 1811 uh, till 1820, when he finally died, the Prince of Wales, future George IV, had the additional title of the Prince Regent. So this is called the Regency because the king was still George III, he did not abdicate, but he was too ill uh, to take any official responsibilities, so his role was taken over by his, um, uh, by, uh, his eldest son, also George, uh, who, uh, who would then, in 1820, after the death of his father, be crowned George IV. Uh, he died in 1830, so he didn't really reign very long, as you can see. Uh, but um, in the historical perspective, in the in the perspective of fashion, ten years is quite a long time. Uh, he left no surviving heirs. He had one daughter called called Charlotte, who was a kind of fashion um, influencer, perhaps uh, uh, during the. Uh, the Regency period, but uh, but she died. Uh, so when he died in 1830, the next in line was his younger brother William, who took the uh, the throne and took the name of William the Fourth. Uh, he was also uh, getting on a bit, let's say. So his uh, his health was not the best, and he finally died in. Now, in 1837. In 1837 we have Queen Victoria, an 18-year-old uh, 18, uh, girl who takes the throne and she sits on the throne all the way to 1901. So this is a very long period, like three generations at least, uh, with um, a lot happening in culture, in politics, in economy, and also in fashion. So uh, we might talk about Victorian fashion, but at least we need to uh, we need to uh, divide it into three parts. So the Victorian fashion before the crinoline, the Victorian fashion with the crinoline, and then the late Victorian fashion with the bustle or the tournure. After <clears throat> Queen Victoria dies, or even a little bit later in the 1890s, 
uh, both the crinoline and the bustle go out of fashion for good and they are replaced by what looks a little bit like a throwback to the romantic fashion with uh, the emphasis on the shoulders and on the sleeves uh, and this fashion continues more or less until the outbreak of the First World War. It is called the Belle Epoque in Europe. In Britain it is called the Edwardian fashion because the monarch for most of this time is Queen Victoria's uh, eldest son, Edward VII. Uh, unfortunately for him, he, uh, he died in 1910 he was already, um, let's say, well advanced in his age when he finally took the throne and he was a heavy smoker, so that killed him in the end. Uh, so from 1910 uh, over to the period of the First World War, his eldest surviving son uh, took the throne. His name was George the fifth. So this is the situation in Britain, okay? And <clears throat> uh, sometimes the term Regency is extended, so it's not only 1811 to, 18, uh, to 1820 when uh, George the fourth ruled as Prince Regent. It is sometimes um, extended, so it's the first part of the 19th century before Victoria succession. This is sometimes called the Regency period. <clears throat> and the Edwardian fashion is sometimes also extended, so at least from <clears throat> 1901 to, let's say, 1914, so the outbreak of the First World War, sometimes the Belle Epoque, well, so the 90s are like a transitionary uh, period be between Victoria and, uh, and Edward. Victoria was uh, an elderly lady, she did not follow fashion that closely. And if you remember, in 1861, her beloved husband, Prince Albert, died quite suddenly and uh, still being young, they were both 42, and Victoria um, uh, she uh, she fell into deep depression. She always wore um, widow's clothes for the rest of her life, so for the next 40 years. Um, she did not follow fashion that closely. There are younger <clears throat> royals, there are the daughters and the very beautiful and fashionable Princess of Wales, the future Queen Alexandra, uh, who influenced the fashion, but uh, not so much the Queen herself. And now a little bit about uh, France. So, <clears throat> again, we have the Revolution, which is sometimes called the First Republic, uh, starting uh, in 1789. And it continues in various forms, uh, the revolution and the post-revolutionary uh, republican, uh, republican uh, government until 1804, when Napoleon I takes over the power and crowns himself, yes, he did crown himself, emperor. So here we have the first empire. Um, he was married to an Austrian princess, but I think for the fashion, more influential person would be his first wife, whom he later divorced, Empress Josephine. So, uh, she would be like the, the poster woman, one of the poster women for, for the neoclassical fashion. We'll talk about it in a little moment. Then, after the, uh, the fall of Napoleon, in 1815 we have the Battle of Waterloo um, final. That you may remember there are some problems so um, Napoleon escaped and returned into, uh, into power for uh, 100 days and then he was defeated for good in 1815. We have the restoration of the monarchy, restoration of the Bourbon dynasty with uh, two kings. They didn't have very, very long reigns but uh, still they were there. So um, Louis the 18th and Charles the 10th. 
So this would really correspond with the Roman with the height of the Romantic fashion. So after the fall of Napoleon, 1815, which is a really important date in the history of fashion because rather abruptly everything neoclassical is replaced by everything Romantic, uh, until Charles X uh, uh, would sit on the throne until 1830. So, uh, this is the moment when we have the change on the throne both in England and in France. Uh, in 1830 in France we have the so-called July Revolution. This is the revolution that you may recall from um, Les Miserables, from the novel or the musical uh, Les Miserables. And uh, uh, then this was a, a middle-class uh, revolution. Uh, people wanted more democratic government, but they didn't really want it to get rid of the monarchy altogether. So what we have is uh, uh, 18 more years of the so-called July monarchy with a um, citizen king, let's say, called, uh, uh, called Louis Philippe. This is a very... Um, particular period in uh, in the style of Europe it's very civilian it's as far from the militaristic overtones of the Napoleonic period as you can as you can go really so um, the uh, the monarchy of Louis Philippe would be overthrown by yet another revolution the revolutions uh, seem to be the national sport in France uh, so 1848, the uh, so-called Wiosna Ludów, the English do not really have the equivalent of that. This, they just call it the revolutions uh, of 1848. Um, Britain was one of the very few countries that were spared the upheavals of 1848. But in France, the monarchy was overthrown and for four years there was the Second Republic and after another coup d'etat by the Napoleon family, um, this time Napoleon's nephew, Napoleon III, yes, there never was a Napoleon II. Uh, Napoleon had a son, but he never ruled as, a, as an emperor. He died very young, in fact. So Napoleon's nephew, uh, also called Napoleon, but Napoleon III, um, took the throne and uh, declared himself to be an emperor again. So we have the second empire with uh, the new emperor uh, coming from this very doubtful, uh, let's say, family line, not a royal family line, but the line uh, connected to uh, to Napoleon uh, and uh, <clears throat> he is uh, remembered in terms of fashion and style by his very beautiful and fashionable wife Empress Eugenie uh, who was Spanish uh, but he married her and she became uh, the Empress of the French. Uh, she is sometimes um, seen as this kind of uh, uh, glamorous royal who popularized the crinoline. You will see quite a lot of portraits of Empress Eugenie and her ladies wearing crinoline dresses in the later 50s. So um, this second empire continues until the war with Prussia between France and Prussia in 1870. Then it is overthrown uh, the war is lost and people are fed up with Napoleon III. He had to escape, he had to emigrate. He actually went to England. And uh, then we have the start of the Third Republic in 1870, which will continue all the way to the Second World War. So this is really the outline of what's happening in the politics, because as you can see, Things like um, the um, uh, the uh, defeat of Napoleon um, and uh, the uh, the July monarchy, uh, and of course Victoria's um, uh, accession, 
these are political events but they influence the culture so much that they are reflected in the fashion. Of course the revolution itself is heavily reflected in the fashion as you will see in the little moment. So we continue in a while. 